Hey guys, this is Founder. In this video, we're going to look on the player allocation system by using Loot Locker in Unity. So let's get started. The first step to do is search for the lootlocker.io. It will open our website of the Loot Locker. Then you need to create account, a pre-account, and then you need to create a sample game. After creating a sample game, you will get this type of window. Okay, so you almost done. But so next thing you need to go to the settings. In settings, you need to go to the platforms. In platforms, you need to enable the byte level lock. There's a bunch of uh, platform for them for your game because for here we're going to use a simple byte level login. Just click on his right level login, then click on the enable. Then after doing all the stuff, you need to make sure you save the changes. This takes more amount of time and you're done. Now we have set up our platform of wide level login from the websites. Now let's go to the Unity. So guys, we are now in the Unity. So here I have some very simple scenes projects. You of course see the blank, a white screen, but here's some game objects like main page, login, sign up, and game page. Let me show you. We have a main page. This is going to be a game page name and have a login and sign up button. Then we have a login page for the login password and login one. We have a sign up page for the sign up purpose. And then we have going to have a small game page which say login and give the player name. And then we have also small amount of text field for setting the player name or it's getting the player name. And this is very simple basic setup of this projects. Now first thing in Unity we need the loot docker SDK. So we need to download this loot docker SDK from the web. Open your browser, go to the github page, github.com slash lootlocker slash unity sdk. I get the link in the description so you can go there. After going, uh, after going to this page, you go and get this page. Okay. If you scroll down a little bit, you they will tell how to install this package. So we're going to use add package from GitHub URL. We're going to use a package manager and there's a feature for the we can add packages from the GitHub. So we're going to copy and copy this GitHub slash new docker dot git and whatever then we go back to the unity go to the window package manager here in you click on the plus icon if you see can the small plus icon there is an option called add package from the git URL. you need to paste this git URL here and click on the add button now after adding the new docker sdk we need to go to the edit project settings lootdocker.sdk and here we need to give some API keys and domain name. This is very important to do, do this thing. Without this, the lootdocker don't going to work. For, in order to get this API key and domain key, we need to go back to the browser go and go to the lootdocker management console and go to the settings, game settings, APIs and here you can get the keys. You need to copy those keys and uh, paste it here. For the API key, we're going to select the first one. Okay. For the domain key, we're going to select the last one. After adding these stuffs, you need to specify the game version and the platform you're going to choose. Here, for this example, I'm choosing the Android. Okay. We and make sure to check this deployment mode because we are in a deployment. We have now when you're ready for the production, you need to disable this. Okay. And we have some other thing. Let's start can debug and a lot of benefits. We're going to leave this for now. Let's close this off. And our SDK is now completely set up. Now, now we're going to start doing the go towards the coding part. Let's see this how this login is going to work. I have so one let's game play this game, game, game manager. This game and here we got lots of small sign up menu. Okay, so let's start. Uh, we have login this sign up. For the login let's and open sign up stuff. Let's open up this and see what's inside. So let's first look on the namespaces. The first name that I'm using is system. Now there's a many namespaces that you can see here, but they are generally dependent on your needs. The one of the most important namespace is the last one is the using lootlocker.request. Without this, you cannot use the loot locker stuffs. And after that, I have some unity UI for the buttons and text mesh pro namespace. And then uh normal that you get by default unity engine and system location and I added a system for my stuff. Also, I did the system namespace because I use I need them. Then after you can look here, I have one region for the pages. Now these are sub uh, basically classes for the main page stuff, login page, sign up page, and game page stuff. Don't get scary because they are not they are just a classes that and this only are storing some variables only. 
the I, I use this way for in order to make the pores look more cleaner but it's really depending on how you can uh, make them so I refer them as a pages if you look here I refer them pages okay. these are just like a page so we have a main page login page and sign up page and game page and these classes are just holding their classes are just here we have a public class for the main page stuff these have this component of main page stuff like for them the first variable is the game object that itself holding the uh, main page next and another two one are the button the first one it was going to be login button and another is for the sign up button and last animator holder this is responsible for the playing some sorts of animation that make the things look cool and last sorry another we have a login page this is going to be handled itself the login page first we have a lot of two tmp field text message pro fields simple fields first one for the login email and then login password we have itself a button and last holder for the animation this is animator and then we have a sign up class first it hold itself a sign up then it have two input fields text message pro and first one for email and password and button for just doing the sign up and animator for, for the animations and last we have a game page stuff the, the first is game object going to hold for itself and second we have a username and then yeah, another one going to be a set button name so this, going, this button will set the name for the our username and this one going to be a get name this is going to get the name of the user from the server then we have a, uh, another input field for the username inputs so of course we need to have if we want to set the input name we need to first give it so we need to use a username input so this is all the things these are just a basic simple classes are just divide into classes in order to organize them and that's nothing so let's uh plot this and click on this and now if you look on the wire start functions we have button in it from some button initializations so basically we have a lots of button in our pages and we need to first select them you can either use unity event and do this by script i'm using doing this by script so i'm using scripts so first two buttons are for uh, response from the main page they are from the main page okay and they just uh, main page login button so the first i'm going to add in the listener for the opening the login page so first button is going to be responsible for the opening the login page and we have another main page from we have another button from the main page and this is going to sign up this is going to be responsible for the opening the sign up page okay if I show this, there are two functions. They are actually uh, actions or you can say functions. Open login page, open sign up. You can get this page. Uh, they are here. So we have an open login page. This basically are small functions. Uh, so that is do a small uh, do a small core routine to open a login page. So this function calls or uh, start core routine on on opening login page. So this and the, in here we have a small kind of playing some animations like set trigger out yield us wait for some time and making the main page sign up page and other, other page that are open to shut them off and same goes for the sign up page we doing the same thing in the sign up page too we have a sign up page and here we're starting a small core routine and this will do the same thing here at all so we got two pages right and we open it now we have uh, some two buttons also from sorry one button in the sign up page that is responsible for the user sign up and one button in the login page that is responsible for the login i just named this login through button okay and we also have a two buttons in the game page that is responsible for setting the player name or getting the player name so set the player nickname this one call this and i said whatever name set button but on the sorry the get button button going to be going to call this functions so these are small button installation part here and next we could first going to look on this user sign up one okay and then we're going to do the login now it's time to look on the user sign up so first thing we know is going to create two local variables the email and passwords this email and password we're going to get from the input fields that we have sign up input fields and we're going to take the text from it and the same goes for the password we're going to get this from the sign up password put 
import and we're going to get this text one okay then we're going to use our loot locker sdk manager functions so we have a loot locker sdk manager and we're going to use the white label sign up function so basically we are using a sign up uh, white label so we need to use this as a parameter we need to pass three parameters the first is going to be email that we have here another we're going to give password and the third one going to be our callback function and he will call if you want thing you want basically i'm going to create a here a lambda function you can extract this here in another function and set this and so in order to make it more concise you can extract this whole thing to new function but i'm using a lambda function here so as a parameter i need to give a response here okay this sign is just a uh, lambda expression or shout hand one you can say and here then we have two curly brackets as like in this function and then in this function we're checking whether the, this response is uh, successful or not if not we're going to throw a error while creating a user we're going to throw a small debug dot dot so we know that there's some kind of error here you can put some kind of message error messages or some kind of ui that throw error what do i do and from here now we're going to return it we don't go to move further from here and we're going to be return this if this is successful, this means this part is going to be a false. If this part is going to be false, we're going to shoot this part. It means we can put small kind of UI that could say, hey, the user, you have successful created user, user. And then you, at this point, you just created a, a user. Okay. You didn't, you didn't assign to a login. You just created a user at this point. So we need to go into call the user login function. So after this user account has been created, we're going to automatically call the account uh, login functions so let's look on the user login one in this user login uh, we have three parameters a string email we're going to pass the email one a string pass a password we're going to pass, pass the password and a bool a member b if you look closely i give the by uh, function true this is the member i give this by default a true but you can also use this as a toggle one the, if you look on the authentication, they have called a toggle or, for, or checkbox for saying, hey, did you remember me or not? Should I remember you or not? Yes, but by default, I know to make this thing simple. I just give pass the value true for now. And okay, so we have three parameters email, password, and memory. Then we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to use a white label login this time. In this white label login, it's going to take four parameters email. Password, memory, and response uh, function basically the same. Simply. Okay, so we got this email from here, password from here, and memory from here. Okay, so then we're going to do a small lambda functions for these. Uh, this is a lambda function. We give it as a parameter as a response, and then we can check this our uh, response is successful or not. If the response is not successful, we can throw some kind of error like hey you. Uh, you have some kind of internet connection problem or maybe the account does not exist anything like stuff this okay and then from here we can return it and if it's successful we're going to be moved to this part automatically because this part is going to be skipped if it's successful then then uh the account has been logged in we need to start a section okay we're going to start a section of the login function okay? So we're going to call the loot locker does white start by label section. Oh, sorry, season whatever. Okay, and here we're going to pass again do a lambda expression and we're going to pass the response. There are a lot of lambda expressions by the way. Okay, so we're going to start the uh, season and we give this as parameters response. And then we check whether this uh this uh, we can successfully start the season or not. It's not not. If it doesn't start, we're going to give some kind of error. Say, again, you can say, hey, you have some kind of problem and back the return. And if it isn't, uh, if, it's, uh, if it means our response is successful, you can just say, hey, you see that it started successfully. Now, we simply open the game or open a game page, you can say. You can, you, you can actually account has you, you successfully uh, uh, log into the username or, and now you can play the game, right? So we got open game page. We're going to open a game page. If I show this function uh, in somewhere down here, okay. So we have simple same. Just like we have a some open game page, and here we're going to start a small core routine. And here of the on opening. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. So 
we what in this function we just asked this way simple function the same as the login sign up we have started coordinating the on opening the game page and this thing going to be like uh making the login holder dot out this could be play a small animation and going to real return wait for some time and making everything false and opening the game page after some time for five seconds so these are basically a very small thing uh if you look upon this you can see it. so this is the uh quick game page so basically we got a user login so what if uh we have created account and we directly got user login we directly do the user login but what if a user is returning back and doing a uh login through the login page okay we are doing the login for the user sign right but we what if the player is already there and is doing login so for this i am just uh, you can call this simple user login function so what i'm doing do this here i'm going to calling this function from the button like you can directly pass this a uh, user login in the here okay you need to pass some give, give us some private rights so but i you can't here so what i'm doing i'm going to call this function from the white login through button if you remember that this function is login page from the login page and the login page is the login button and adding the we adding a listener log base login through button so in login through button we going to give some taking email from the login page of course password and remember me there's a toggle maybe in your game maybe there's toggle but for i'm giving it to you and then in user login i'm passing through these values like user login passing the email email one password and remember me i just simply write remember and after all of this uh, you have successfully created the user login yes you have created the whole authentication system now there is a maybe after this can add many things but i will tell you later so you guys now after after all of this you can guys create successfully a simple play authentication system by using loop docker let's see this in action Now, in order to set the username or to get the username, we need to first quick create some functions for this. As you remember that I have some two buttons and one input field in the game page for the username get and set uh, two buttons and the one input field that is going to text max text max pro input field. Like right? so, first thing we do to create a function white set player name. Okay, in, and give the parameter as a string name. Okay. So when we call this function, we need to give this uh, string name here. Then we're going to call the function our uh, set player name dot functions and give the parameter as a name. And then we're going to do a small lambda function. This lambda function we will first check whether the response is successful or not. If we successfully, so we can tell the uh, okay yes your name has been uh, set successfully. And if not, we're going to give some error like hey you have not entered in it or you cannot do this stuff. So now by Okay, this is very simple code, and this and that's all. Uh, you have come successfully set the username. Now, in order to get the okay, you have set the player name. Now, in order to call this, I'm going to have another function set player nickname, and then call this function. And as a parameter, I'm going to give the game page username input dot text. The uh, input field that it has uh, the input field that going to, you can see on the game page, and we're going to take a text out of this. Okay, so we. Call the function the set player nickname. Okay, we got two functions here. Now we get the player name. Okay, now it's time to get the player name. We have already set it, and now it's time to get it. Now to get it, first we need to create an empty string. I go and create an empty string called the username, and the next line we're going to call again a new, uh, simply a get player name function. 
this time I'm going to give a lambda of six simply, uh, simply a lambda expression, and as a parameter I'm going to give response. If the response is successfully, you can uh, uh, set the username equal to response dot name, and then I can set the username dot text is going to be equal to the player name a small string, and just join this text uh, string with the username, and we're going to got the username. Okay, and if not uh, response is not successful, simply just throw some kind of error. Okay. And that's how you can set the player name, or you can set the how set you can set the player name, or get the player name. So you can call this function through the buttons. Simply yes, you can call this function through the buttons. If you look, there's some in last line. I've created a set player name and calling the set player nickname function, and in a get for name button, I'm calling the get name player. In Unity, let's start to quickly login up and start to set the player name. Okay, currently we have a player name has we nothing. We have don't have any player name, but we have public UID. But that's nothing better. So let's go to back and get some login. Okay, we have complete login here. We have a player name X Y Z. Basically, a dummy text. So that just set that name or set a name like uh. Let's try to give it uh fallen. Just simply give fallen and just set it. Now we have successfully set the name. If you go to the browser and reload the page, and uh, here look, we got the name has changed to blank to the fallen. And if you go to Unity and click on the get button and wait for some time, the name here has changed to fallen. That's how you can set basically set up how to get the name or set the name of the user. Okay, this is the simple. So that's it for this video, and I hope you learned something from this video. So if you want some additional video on the player or the case, I recommend you check out the official Loot Locker YouTube channel. There we where they talk about in depth about the player education, like why it's needed, what it is, and why it's needed, how you can implement, and about all the features they have talked about. So I really recommend you check out that channel. And so and this is basically a basic setup. If you want to in depth, you check out this channel. And if you want to support, you can uh, subscribe to the channel. And if you support me more, you can support me on the coffee, coffee slash fallen blood. You can support by me by donating uh, any amount of money. And all the codes is available on the GitHub, so I give the link in the description. You can get check out the codes and use the codes in the game. So thanks for watching. Until next video, goodbye.